Hi, I'm Venu Menon. I'm the section head of clinical cardiology at the Cleveland Clinic, and I'm also the program director of the Cardiovascular Fellowship here. Uh, welcome to our program highlighting research uh, contributions by fellows uh, during training. And today I have the distinct pleasure of having Owen Donlin, a third year cardiology fellow, who's done some pretty remarkable work on highlighting uh, radiation induced aortic stenosis and the impact of therapies and prognosis in this area. So, uh, as you all know, you know uh, there are a lot of survivors who've had radiation in their teenage and young years, and radiation tends to have a pancarditis. It can involve the valves, it can involve the coronaries, it can involve the pericardium. Uh, Owen's really focused on the valve and aortic stenosis and had two really important papers in this area. The first was published in JAHA, and uh, Tell the audience what you did in that paper, what was your hypothesis, and how you went about doing it. Uh, basically, what we wanted to look at in the JAHA paper was how do patients with radiation-induced aortic stenosis fare following surgical aortic valve replacement. Uh, so we identified uh, our patients with radiation heart disease and significant aortic stenosis uh, from our surgical database here and match them in a two-to-one manner against patients without a history of radiation undergoing surgical aortic valve replacement. Um, during a mean follow-up of over six years, uh, we saw that almost 50% of the patients in the radiation group uh, died, compared to just over a quarter of patients in the non-radiation group. Uh, when we looked at the parameters influencing this on multivariable analysis, a history of mediastinal radiation was highly significant, um, highly significantly associated with mortality. Now, Owen, was that because they did more poorly after the index operation? Because we know that radiation can cause an a hostile chest and increase serositis and fibrosis? Or was it the underlying illness that brought them to the table that then there was a secondary harm because it was a competitive risk of something else going on? Uh, when, when we looked at the uh, immediate post-operative survival and 30-day survival following the procedure, uh, I believe the survival of 30 days was 98%. Uh, so I don't think it was as much an issue of the you know, surgical procedure being, te being technically difficult, which it certainly is in, in this population, um, but rather you know, other, other factors associated with, associated with radiation, heart disease, uh, portending a, a worse, uh, longer-term survival. So, Owen, uh, is there anything apart from a history of radiation exposure that when you see an image of someone with aortic stenosis makes you suspect that radiation might be playing a role in their aortic stenosis? Certainly. Uh, this is a question that's been uh, studied by the imaging department here, um, specifically Dr. Desai in great detail. Uh, he looked at the aortomitral curtain, uh, the degree of calcification, its association with radiation heart disease, and its um, you know, independent significance in uh, survival. Uh, other factors we look at, as you mentioned, radiation typically affects multiple valves, multiple cardiac structures. Uh, it can result in dense pericardial calcification. Uh, so we certainly look at pericardial uh, calcium. Uh, it can affect the myocardium, resulting in a, a restrictive cardiomyopathy. Uh, and we also look at, obviously, valve calcification. And I guess uh, these patients are much younger than the traditional patients that we've sent for surgery for aortic valve replacement. They are, and for, for that specific reason, it's, you know, it's, it, was, it was pretty difficult to come up with a, with a matched group uh, of control patients. Now, in your second study uh, in circulation, uh, you take this a step further, right, with developments in TAVA technology and our ability to put valves in in a much more non-invasive fashion. I think the radiation population is ideal to get a TAVA because then all these complications of going into the chest and the serositis are probably avoided. So what's our experience been in doing TAVA in patients with radiation aortic stenosis? 
Yeah, um, it, in the, the subset of patients with radiation heart disease in whom TAVR is a possibility, um, outcomes are, are pretty good. Uh, we, we looked at 98 patients with radiation heart disease who'd undergone TAVR at our institution. At three years, survival was 80%, so actually a little bit better than our surgical AVR population. Now, that needs to be weighed against the fact that the majority of patients who underwent surgical AVR didn't undergo isolated SAVR, but rather had concomitant bypass surgery, uh, repair or, or replacement of another valve. Um, but in, in patients who have isolated surgical AVR and maybe coronary disease amenable to PCI, uh, TAVR is certainly a, you know, a suitable therapeutic approach. Thanks for highlighting this really vulnerable group of patients because I do think that they are under-recognized. We have all of these children with Hodgkin's lymphoma or women who had left-sided breast cancer with radiation who potentially are le leading really healthy lives now but are vulnerable and need to be followed over time for these complications. And I think it's important to recognize them and treat them effectively. And I think your uh, data highlighting outcomes with both SAVA and TAVA in this population has certainly contributed significantly to the care of these patients. So thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Menon.